How many subsets does a set have? Well, let's take a look at some examples and see if we can use inductive reasoning to come up with a formula. Over here on the left, I've listed the number of elements in some various sets. So for example, a set that contains zero elements is the empty set. A set that contains one element might be the set containing the letter A. A set containing two elements might be the set containing A and B. And a set containing three elements might be the set containing A, B, and C. How many subsets does each of these sets have? Well, let's start with the empty set. How many subsets of the empty set contain zero elements? Well, the only subset of the empty set is the empty set itself. We can't form a subset that has one element because the empty set doesn't have any elements in it to begin with. So how many subsets does the empty set have? It only has one. What about the set containing A? Does it have any subsets that contain zero elements? Well, yeah, the empty set is a subset of every set, including itself. What about subsets that contain one element? Well, that would be the set containing A. Every set is a subset of itself. What about a subset containing two elements? Well, no, that's not possible because the set containing A doesn't have two elements. So in this case, we've only got two subsets. What about the set containing A and B? Does it have any subsets containing zero elements? Yeah, the empty set. What about sets containing one element? Well, we could have the set containing A, but we could also have the set containing B. So there's two subsets that contain one element. What about subsets that contain two elements? Well, that would be the set containing A and B. So how many subsets did we get all together? We got a total of four. What about the set containing A, B, and C? Well, the subset containing zero elements would be the empty set. The subsets containing one element would be the set containing A, the set containing B, and the set containing C. What about the subsets containing two elements? Well, we could have the set containing A and B. We could have the set containing A and C. Or we could have the set containing B and C. And what about subsets containing three elements? Well, that would be the set itself, the set containing A, B, and C. So how many elements did we have all together? We have one plus three plus three plus one. That is equal to eight. Do you see the pattern? Yeah, that's right. As the number of elements goes up by one, the total number of subsets is doubling. We have one, two, four, eight. If we've had four elements, then we'd expect that there would be 16 subsets. So what about a formula? Could we write a formula? Well, notice that eight is a power of two, four is a power of two, two is a power of two, and so on. So let's write each of these as a power of two. We know that eight is two times two times two, which is two cubed. Four is two times two, which is two squared. Two is just two to the first power. And one is equal to two to the zero power. So notice that if we know the number of elements in a set, then the number of subsets is gonna be two raised to that number of elements. So if we have n elements, how many subsets will there be? That's right, we'll have two raised to the n subsets. Now before we move on, I want you to notice a truly incredible pattern. 
let's write down the number of subsets in each of these different boxes. How many subsets did we have here? We had one. One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. Have you seen those numbers before? Yeah, that's Pasquale's triangle. One, 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 two, one. One plus two is three, two plus one is three, and we have ones on the end. What would be the next row? Well, we'd have one, four, six, four, one. So if we had four elements, then there would be one subset containing no elements, four subsets containing one element, six subsets containing two elements, four subsets containing three elements, and one subset containing four elements. And we, we added those together, we would end up with two to the fourth. So interestingly enough, writing out the subsets creates Pascal's triangle. Now so far, everything that we've been doing involves inductive reasoning. Can we make sense of why the formula is two to the n subsets? In other words, instead of just using examples, can we think of a logical reason why this works, just using the, you know, starting off with an arbitrary set and determining that there are two to the n subsets? Well, let's write out an arbitrary set. Let's say we have the set containing a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and then all the way up to a sub n. So we're starting off with a set that contains n elements. How many subsets does it contain? Well, as we're creating a subset, we have to make decisions. We have to decide whether we include or whether we do not include each of the elements. So when we look at A1, we have to decide, do we include it or don't we include it? That's two choices. Then we go to A2. Again, we have two choices. We either include it or we don't. For A3, we have two choices. We either include it or we don't. And that pattern continues until we get to the last element. And again, we have two choices. Well, in order to determine the total number of choices, we just have to multiply these numbers together. And because we have n elements, we're multiplying 2 by itself n times, which gives us 2 to the n subsets. So we started off with an arbitrary set of n elements and concluded that there were 2 to the n subsets. This is an example of using deductive reasoning to show that our conjecture was true. The number of subsets is 2 to the n. The last thing I'd like for us to think about is how many proper subsets does each set have? Let's go back to our table and we'll take away all the sets that are not proper. The empty set is not a proper subset of the empty set. The set A is not a proper subset of the set containing A. In general, a set is not a proper subset of itself. So we just have to take away each of the original sets. Notice that each time we're taking away one set from the row. So what would be a formula for the number of proper subsets? You're right. All we need to do is to take the total number of subsets and take away one. This is the number of proper subsets.